Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all good. Now you may be able to see we're somewhere different. <laughs> we are actually, me and my family on holiday and I just need to show you guys how beautiful it is. So this video is gonna be like a chill reading vlog. I don't know how much I'm gonna read. I'll take you through what books I've brought later when we actually unpack, but I wanted to like show you the house before we unpack anything because it will get messy up. <laughs> This is one of the gardens that we have. There's another one on the other side. There's loads of sheep in all the fields around us. You probably can't see any of them. Oh, there they are. That's some of them. This is the house. Can we just talk about how stunning this is for a second? I'm going to take you inside and I'm going to show you around all the rooms because it's literally one of the most stunning places I've ever been. So this is the kitchen when you first walk in. Oh my God, is it so cute? Look at this. Well, guess what, people? I get excited about small things. This is the kitchen. How cute. This is the living area. How cute. And look, this is one of my favorite parts. Look, there's a wall of books. I actually haven't looked at this properly yet and seen if there's any that I want to read. I mean, I've got a lot with me. But isn't that so cute? Isn't that so cute? And then in terms of the bedrooms, this is one in here. This place is literally amazing. Hello. Hello. <laughs> the shower. So cute. And this is like a twin room. Isn't this like the most like quaint, cute place you've ever literally been ever in your life? Well, you guys aren't here, but I am. <laughs> And then we want to go up these stairs. A super cute like reading area. Then there's this room. Are you gagging? Because I am. Look. I'll show you what I think is going to be mine and Tom's room. Hang on. Isn't it so cute? A little place to read up there. And then we have like a shower in here as well. Oh, hell, that's dark. You can't see anything out of there. <laughs> you can sit here and read and look out at all the sheep. <laughs> so yeah, that is a quick whistle stop tour of the place we're going to be staying at. We're going to pop out now to go get some food and stuff. So that's why it was a rush. <laughs> but this reading vlog is just going to be like chill, more of like a holiday vlog. And I might read. I'm not going to put any pressure on myself to read. Okay, so good morning morning it is sunday i know it was a bit of a, like a crazy start to the video <laughs> i feel like move-in day is always crazy so we literally got here i filmed quickly and then uh, we went out to get food and we went to dinner at this amazing burger restaurant called the beefy boys and i filmed in the restaurant i like planned to have like a little bit of like a you know on B <laughs> like b-roll kind of thing but i ate the burger before i could film it. The level of unprofessionalism, far too much. I like finished the burger and I was like, oh shit. <laughs> but it was so good. Let me put, I'll put pictures on their Instagram in here. It was like one of the best burgers I've ever had in my entire life. It was so good. So it is Sunday. We are about to go out to like, we're gonna do like paintballing and like, uh, I think we're doing archery. I'm I'm good at archery. Archery is gonna be my round. We're doing a few things. I'm not sure how much we're gonna, I'm gonna be able to film because Definitely not paintballing because we're gonna be running around like trying to get each other. But I thought before we went out, I would show you the books I've bought with me to read. I've limited myself. I bought six with me. Stop it. Get some help. I probably won't read all six, but I wanted to have a few options. And these are all new releases as well. So ones I really want to prioritize. I bought uh, Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. This is the book I'm going to start with. This is like the number one book that I want to read. I feel like it's going to be a very good holiday book from what I've heard from people talking about it. Then I bought Blackout by all these authors. <laughs> Daniel Clayton, Nick Stone, Tiffany D. Jackson, Ashley Woodfolk, Andrew Thomas, and Nicola Yoon. It's really short. It's only like 250 pages. So not long at all. And so I feel like this would be another good holiday read. I feel like it's the kind of thing you can read in one sitting. This is probably gonna be the next one I read after Project Hail Mary. It's Ace of Spades by Frida Iomede. This is like inspired by Gossip Girl. It's this private academy. Secrets start getting revealed. I am so excited to read this. This is like everyone who's been reviewing this has been giving it five stars and saying how fucking crazy it is. So I am so excited. Listen, I may only read two books in this video. I'm not gonna put pressure on myself to read a certain number of books because I'm on holiday. I'm just here relaxing bitch but also on holiday sometimes you read loads so i'm just gonna like let it be 
But if I only read two books, these are the two books you're gonna be seeing in this video. <laughs> then I brought The Appeal by Janice Hallett. This is a mixed media murder mystery, so it's all told through like text and emails and stuff. Then I brought another short one, like Blackout. I think short books are quite good for holiday. I brought Switch by A.S. King. This is about this girl where time has stopped in this world and she thinks it's to do with this switch in her house that her dad keeps building boxes around. It's gonna be very strange. Almost all these books are books from my most recent haul because <laughs> they're the books I'm obviously most excited to read. And then I told you in this book haul I was gonna bring six Crimson Cranes with me because I just fell in love with this book. Like, oh my God, it is literally the most gorgeous book I own. And I really don't know the plot. I could not tell you anything about the plot, but I bought it with me because it is so beautiful and that makes me want to read it soon. So that is all the books that I've bought with me. I feel like we've got a really good selection, a good like variety of books. And I'm just so excited. We're gonna have a great holiday. We're gonna chill out and um, it's such an amazing place. I am gonna go start Project Hail Mary today. I am just finishing at the moment the audiobook for In the Market for Murder, which is like one of my favorite cozy mystery, historical mystery series. It's not really worth vlogging about. I'll update you probably when I finish it, but it's gonna be five stars actually. This one, I'm really, really enjoying it. It's about this like lady and her maid and they're solving these mysteries and it's just so much fun. Like I really enjoy the characters. I think the more I read from this series, the more I enjoy them because their relationship and their friendship Friendship is so cool. So I am about to finish that. I'll probably finish that in the car first and then I will start Project Hail Mary. My dad is currently reading Six of Crows <laughs> and I said to him before we came away, I was like, don't you want to bring Cook a Kingdom with you? And he was like, no, I probably won't read like Probably won't finish Six of Crows. He's already read this morning on our first day, like 250 pages. He's really, really enjoying it. Joke for him, not really Cook a Kingdom, Kingdom, but well done, Dad, for enjoying Six of Crows. <laughs> Load again, all loaded, and pull! So the paintballing, you didn't actually see the paintballing because we couldn't film it, but the paintballing, archery and clay pigeon shooting that we did yesterday was so much fun. But I finished In the Market for Murder, which is the audio book I've been listening to, and I gave it five stars. I just loved it. If you're looking for good, cozy mystery audiobooks, these audiobooks, The Lady Hardcastle Mysteries by T.E. Kinsey, are like the best. They're just so much fun. I love the relationship between Lady Hardcastle and Florence. They're just like nice historical cool cozy mysteries you know this one has like three mysteries in it that all end up being sort of linked and I just thought it was really imaginative because I thought when reading it they were going to solve like three separate mysteries but they actually ended up being kind of linked which I thought was really really clever so I would really recommend these audiobooks they're not going to be everyone's cup of tea though so I won't talk about them for too long but they're like a fun holiday read I am about already 70 to 80 pages into Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir I know I need to take the stickers off but I started doing it and it started going going wrong and I was like no 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 <laughs> no I'm scared but I'm really enjoying this so basically we are following this main character who wakes up on this spaceship he can't remember who he is his crewmates are around him as like decayed corpses and it's basically just been him figuring out who he is and why he's on this spaceship we've been having a lot of flashbacks to like his previous life <laughs> and learning about this kind of problem that's happening in the world where there's these like microorganisms that seem to be making the sun get colder or taking some of the sun's energy so they think earth is going to decrease by like 10 degrees in the next 30 years which would be catastrophic it would like kill everyone and uh, he thinks he's trying to investigate that but i don't really know I'm really enjoying this. This is so readable, like literally you're flying through it, which I think is such a feat for sci-fi. Usually with sci-fi, I'm like, what? Like, I'm, I'm confused because, like I wish there was someone next to me like reading the book so I could nudge them and ask them, like what does that mean? <laughs> but um, although this has like a lot of advanced science in it, 
it's explained in a way where you can kind of leave what you don't understand and you understand that it will be explained to you really well if you need to 100% understand it. But a lot of it is un is explained in like layman's terms, like really easy to understand. So I really like that aspect of it. It just reads so well, like I'm really enjoying it and I'm barely any other way into it. So we're about to go for a walk now. We've just kind of had a chill day today. I went for a run this morning with all the sheepies. We're just gonna go for like a chill walk now. And then this afternoon, I need to plan a few things for a video I'm filming tomorrow. Um, which you're not gonna see in this vlog. It's gonna come out in a couple weeks It's like a really really exciting video that I'm filming while I'm here But you're not gonna see that in the vlog So I need to plan stuff to do with that, but then other than that I am going to read this yesterday because I spent the whole day filming another video. I am just over like 300 pages into Project Hail Mary. I'm still really really enjoying it. There's something that happens about the 30% mark that changes the course of this story and some people I've seen have talked about it and some people haven't. Like some people have treated it like a spoiler. So I don't really know what approach to take. <laughs> what I will say is that uh, Rylan Grace, the astronaut, he stumbles across another ship in space. I will say that, I will say that. I said what I said. As and always. I'm not changing on it, okay? And it has changed the course of the story completely. This is like one of the only stories that I really want to spoil. <laughs> that I want to talk about spoilery because of how it I can't really talk about anything that happens now because it's hard because it kind of shifts the format of the story a lot but I'm really enjoying the science aspects of everything still it's very interesting the flashbacks where we learn about how Ryland ended up being one of the people on this ship is very interesting because he was kind of one of the first scientists to discover this what was causing earth to um cool down because of the sun um so he's kind of like a leading expert in this but he is not supposed to be going on this ship. And so you're like, how does that end up happening? It still has that humor that The Martian has. If you read The Martian or watch The Martian, you know it's very funny. And this still has that same humor. I think the pacing is amazing. I'm loving the audiobook as well. The audiobook doesn't really, why am I holding my sunglasses like this? The audiobook doesn't really come to life until that 30% mark. I think I read it mostly physically up until then. And then after that, I've listened to a lot of the audiobook because it comes to life because of something that happens. I can't tell you. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't keep this a secret. But I have been loving that and I've read a vast majority of this with the audiobook as well. But it's just so interesting. It makes me want to read more sci-fi, but I feel like this is my level of like comprehension for sci-fi is like fairly digestible sci-fi. This could be a five star. I've had a lot of really good books so far this month and this could be a five star. So like, let's hope, hey? He's alone in space and he's having to figure out all these things to save the whole of humanity. Like that's such a big weight on someone's shoulders. And I think it's such an interesting dynamic. And yeah, I'm just really enjoying it so today we're going out to this like castle stately home kind of thing it's about an hour's drive away so I'm definitely gonna finish this today which I'm really really excited about and I'm excited to go out I do I love a good stately home it makes me feel a bit bougie um. <laughs>
we are back from the stately home. It was a bit shit, not gonna lie. <laughs> He's mugged you off, darling. He has mugged you off. Listen, if I go to a stately home, I want history. Like, I want you to teach me about the horrible people who lived there and how at one point their wealth left them. And I just want to know all the history facts about it. And there wasn't anything. It was just looking around rooms. I'm like, why am I here then? What's the point? Why am I here? <laughs> but I have finished Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir and I loved it. I think it's amazing. I just don't know what rating to give it. I'm torn between a 4.5 and a 5 because I loved it. I think, okay, I'm gonna settle on a 4.5 because part of me, <laughs> here's the thing, here's the thing. I go through these stages of at one point thinking 4.5s are necessary because my fives should be closely guarded. And then I go through another stage of thinking, nah, just give it a five at that point. Like just give it a five. And I flick between the two. So there are some books that I've rated a 4.5, then other stages I would have rated a 5. There's some books I've rated a 5, then other mindsets I would have rated a 4.5. But I think this is a 4.5 because I don't think I loved it quite as much as The Martian. I mean, I know I shouldn't compare it to these other books, but like it's what I'm gonna do. I felt like it didn't feel as high stakes as The Martian, even though it is higher stakes. Like The Martian is one dude's life. This is one dude's life and the whole of the human race. So it's much higher stakes, but it just didn't necessarily feel it. And I didn't feel as emotional, I don't think. But it was really funny, really entertaining. I loved a certain character in it. Uh, that I can't get into because spoilers, but I loved that character. If you've read it, you'll know who I'm talking about. That was like the highlight of the book for me. And it makes me want to read more sci-fi. I've said how sci-fi and horror are both genres I enjoy when I read them, but I don't pick them up a lot. So I definitely want to read more. But yeah, I recommend the audiobook. I really, really enjoyed it. Listen, I'm tired. <laughs> it's like having a job working 24 seven for two days on the trot. You know when you're on holiday and you like, you reach a, you reach a certain point <laughs> when you've like been doing stuff every day and you're just so tired, like you're holiday tired. Do you know what I mean? Like I don't wanna be picking up a camera, but like I'm doing it for you. Next, I am gonna pick up Ace of Spades by Farida Abike Iamede. I don't know if I'll read anything else. Depends how quickly I fly through this. I'm gonna go start this tonight. We'll see how far I get before I fall asleep. It's not even late. I'm like about to have dinner. It's not late, but I'm just tired. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm just gonna chill out. I might play some games with my family as well. So I may not read a lot. We shall see. I didn't talk to you yesterday. I didn't do a lot of reading. We went to like this water garden, which was really cute and um, just chilled out basically. Oh my God, I had, sorry, I'm like flashing you. I had one of the best ice creams of my life. I didn't even film it because it was melting so quick, but I had, it was profiterole flavor. So it was like vanilla ice cream with like chocolate sauce, like thick chocolate sauce throughout it. I will never be the same. Like I will, I will never be the same. <laughs> but wow, what a moment. I will never forget. I'm only about 55 pages through Ace of Spades. I don't know how I feel about it yet, obviously, because I'm only really at the start, but I don't know if I like the writing style. I don't know. Like, it's obviously heavily inspired by Gossip Girl. Basically, we're at this private school. We are following the perspective of the two only black students there, Devon. He's like a very quiet, like never really, you know, been that popular or that outspoken before. And uh, Chiamaka's like Queen B. She's like that bitch, she's that bitch. And then everyone starts getting text saying like the instead of um is it gossip girl and gossip girl 
I didn't watch it, but like this person called themselves Aces and they're leaking secrets. So Devon has uh, had a picture of him kissing another guy leaked basically. And like, it's fine, but I don't know if I like the writing style yet. But like I said, I'm only 55 pages in. So like that means nothing. I like the idea of it. I'm hoping that the secrets that are revealed and the whole like drama is gonna get ridiculous and we're all gonna be like screaming. But I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it yet. Hmm. I'm getting older. I, I don't know if I can, if I want all this drama all the time, if I'm being honest. I don't know. And it feels a bit, sometimes with YA mysteries, I don't connect. Like sometimes a YA mystery has to be a certain kind of vibe for me to connect. So I just don't know yet, you guys. I just don't know. I just don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but I want to love it because everyone has loved it. So I feel like I am going to. I just feel like I haven't gotten into the story yet. And if you ask me in like another 60, 70 pages, I will be fully into it. So today we're going to a place called Puzzlewood. I don't really know anything about it. So I don't plan our itinerary. <laughs> but we're going to go there and then we've got to start packing up. Don't worry, I am going to read this on the way home tomorrow, so I'll probably end up finishing it then. So I will check in with you when I get back home tomorrow. I won't leave you, like, waiting <laughs> on my opinion, like, till the wrap-up. Oh my god, I filmed this whole thing without putting lipstick on. Okay. Okay. Foundation lips. Okay. Okay, bye. <laughs> Okay, so we are leaving. It's the last day. We're well, last morning. We're leaving in like an hour or so. Oh my God, I look rough, please. Let's not talk about it. I'm only about 145 pages into Ace of Spades and I still don't love it yet. And I'm not sure why. I just don't feel the writing yet. And listen, I'm not that far in. So like I could become obsessed with it, but it's just not. What was that? Okay, James. Gotten to a place yet where I'm super interested in it. But this is like a five star prediction. So like, I'm hoping we're gonna get there. I feel like it just needs to take a little bit more time. But yeah, I don't really have much more to update you on. I'll update you when I get home because I will finish this on the car ride. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Ah, I wanna love it. <laughs> Bye house. Bye sheeps. Bye sheepies. Okay, we are back home. My room is a mess. <laughs> it's a mess. If you could see what I can see behind this camera right now. <laughs> I finished Ace of Spades in the car ride yesterday and I'm gonna give it three stars. That feels like blasphemy. You guys, you understand how awful that makes me feel. I go on Goodreads and literally all the people I'm friends with, five stars, five stars, five stars, five stars, five stars. <laughs> It feels wrong. It feels wrong. It feels like maybe I can just pretend. Maybe we can just pretend I gave this five stars because I feel guilty. I feel horrible. Like I don't like not liking this book. Well, it wasn't that I didn't like it. It was that it was disappointing. I think maybe part of the problem is that it was built up so much in my mind that it couldn't reach that. But here's the thing. My number one problem was with the style of writing. And I've often said, the writing is the first barrier for me. Like after that comes plot and characters and whatever. But if I just don't vibe with the way that the writing flows, we're not getting anywhere. I hate to say it. I hate to say it. I, I don't want to talk about this, but I also don't want to lie. But I feel guilty. You know, it's a debut by an author of colour. It's a super exciting book. So don't let me deter you from reading this because everyone else has loved it. The writing just felt a bit... Ah, I don't know what right word is. Please do not. This is an intense request from my heart. It felt like old YA writing. And here's the thing, I think this is quite young YA in my opinion. Like it reads quite young. It reads as something like a 13 or 14 year old would enjoy. I think I tend to read like YA that's kind of 
virgin on adult is what I tend to really love. So like that may be a fault with me. I'm kind of looking in the wrong place. And I also feel like a lot of, okay, this is a discussion we need to have because this is an important discussion. I felt like the tropes in this book were very old YA. Like, you know, Gossip Girl, or like that kind of era of books and TV. But <laughs> the important thing is, is I don't think this book should be critiqued for that because Authors of colour have not yet had the opportunity to explore these kind of tropes because these are, you know, so much of YA was, you know, gatekeeping, no, gate kept for white people. <laughs> yeah, only white people had access to writing these kinds of stories. So now when authors of colour write these kinds of stories, I don't think they should I don't think they should be critiqued for doing that because it's like their their chance to do that. It's like time for them to explore these kind of tropes. So that isn't what this book should be critiqued for, in my opinion. My rating that I give, and this is like across the board in all books, is my personal enjoyment rating. If I was a book reviewer for like a newspaper or some shit, I would probably give this for like the importance, for the core of this book's values and what it represents, I would probably give this like a four star. I think it's really important in the discussions it brings up about institutional racism and how black people are beaten down and prevented from achieving their full potential by racism in society. But my three star rating is a personal enjoyment rating and that's like the difference. There's elements of this I really loved. I really liked Chiamaka and Devon, the main characters that we followed. I thought it was so interesting seeing Chimaka be this really like headstrong knows what she wants kind of girl and for that to be appreciated particularly in a black girl where those traits are often critiqued I thought that was really good I really liked Devon he was my favorite character in this book by far but the writing just like stopped me at the first hurdle so it was hard for me to fully get into it I will say from about page like 300 on like from here on it was much better. The twist in the book, if you've read this book you'll know what I'm talking about, I think the twist was done really well. I enjoyed it more after that point, slightly. <laughs> I really liked the twist in this, obviously I won't spoil it, but I really liked the twist and it wasn't something I saw coming and I thought it was very clever and really put a lens up to society. But yeah, it just, it just wasn't for me. This book just wasn't for me and I'm really sad about it and I want to love it. Like this was a book I was so, so excited to read. So that was my holiday vlog. I hope you enjoyed watching it. Thank you so much for joining me. And yeah, I will see you very, very soon in another video for more regular content. I'm back from holiday now. And when I tell you we've got so much exciting stuff coming up, I just, I just love it. I'm just so excited. Anyway, I'll see you soon.